We just stepped on their face with a hobnail boot and broke their nose. Dog Nation, we are back in the building. It's 100 Sanford. It's Lovelace. It's Foster. And guess what, Foss? It ain't going to take that long. I'm just going to let the fans know right now. Kirby said it ain't going to take that long. It ain't going to take that long again. What's going on today, brother? Hey, I'm in the house. I'm in the house today. We back. Um, a little less melancholy, you know what I mean? Uh, we, you know, uh, with recruiting and all that, it seems like our 24th season has started up already. You yes, know, sir. We're putting, we putting the hay in the barn as far as recruiting goes. Um, still got that number one class of some some young youngsters that are, you know, coming to help us get back to the top of the mountaintop. It ain't like we fell off the mountain. We still hanging up there, ch- checking out things. You know, we yeah. just let somebody else, we let somebody else uh, hold a controller for a little bit. You know what I'm saying? You can play a little bit. We let <laughs> play a little bit. Hey, hey, you know what I'm saying? We play, but we're going to take our controller back very soon. Yeah. Very man. soon. We know that time is coming. You know what I mean? Like, yep. look, we're going to get into all of this. We got Graham coming on. We got a great guest coming on today. That's actually going to help us talk about a little bit, a little bit what's going on with college football, right? College First thing football. I got to ask you, though, what sweatshirt you got, brother? What, what, sweatshirt, what sweatshirt is that? Is that straight from, you know, the equipment manager? What is that? Because I, I like that. I like <laughs> no, that. man, I had, to, I, had to, I had to buy this, man. I probably got this <laughs> off of, you know, some website. You know, who knows? We'll figure it out. Come you know, maybe, maybe, maybe I probably might say who it is one day. They, <laughs> they, sponsor, they sponsor us. You yes, did. sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, <laughs> I got I got a little Ben Gay on my shoulder. You know, uh, like the bio free. Yeah, <laughs> brother. I'm trying to get sponsored by them because you know you, you get a little older. You got the little, <laughs> you get little bruises. You gotta you know you gotta get that. But uh, but hey, before you go any further, you already you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button. Foss, show them where it's at. Show them where it's at on the screen. There it is. There it is. Yeah, hit that subscribe button. Make sure you like the show. That way, we continue to grow. We continue to give y'all everything that you need. Then head on over to IG, TikTok, Facebook, and the X. Like and forward the show to all your friends. Then last but not least, you already know what to do. Go over to Dog Nation. I mean, go over to Dog Central, the collaboration for the nation for Intel, posts, pods, video, and everything that you need to get from Dog Nation. Then you already know what to do. Everybody needs insurance. It's Christmas time. Times is tough. Times is rough. But make sure you take care of your family. Hit up my guy, Justin Elijah, based in Texas, but a dog man through and through who was licensed in all 50 states. He worked with various major uh, carriers, Mutual of Omaha, North American, AIG, and others, along with offering affordable options in life insurance, retirement plans, and others. Give him a call, 229 400 47 59 and when you call make sure you tell them 100 samples hit you up and sent you there last but not least you already know we were talking about gear and i don't have mine on today i got the old school joint on today but head on over to home field apparel our favorite spot to get unique comfortable and officially licensed ncaa apparel choose from a wide selection of georgia apparel and over 150 colleges i gotta get my wife a new pit joint I got to get my brother to Duquesne University joint. My dad's a pit alum. I got to get him some stuff. So, hey, it's the holidays. So use the online convenience and order the gear with the unique logos, mascots, and iconic moments. Uh, use the promo code 100 Sanford for 15% off your first order. That's 100 Sanford for 15% off your first order. And we promise you won't be disappointed. So, Foss, let's get back into it. Like I said, we got Graham getting ready to come on. Man, I like. I need to get. I need to get that sweatshirt, man. We got the same thing going joint? on. Man. Yes. Yeah, your hat, my hat matches your shirt. 
What the, we, we, you know, we can switch, but you know, <laughs> um, I'll be I'll be um, big guy in a little coat. <laughs> or no, I do be big guy in a little coat. I'll be I'll big just, guy. I might be yeah, wrong. Uh, I, I don't know if I can borrow that one. You did. No, nah, I tell you what, Foss. I mean, you want you one of my partners, so you know what? I already got the address. You never know when something <laughs> might come in that Christmas bag for you. Underneath that tree, I got you hooked up, man. Um, we got Graham coming on. You know, Graham's a little slimmy slim, so we got to get him like a small or something like that. I don't know, but yeah, you know, we'll, we'll take care of him. Them young fellas, them slim fellas. <laughs> but man, look, we got to calm Dog Nation down. I mean, Facebook, yeah. IG. I mean, everywhere you go. I was in the grocery store, ran into somebody here in Virginia. We were talking about the game, and man, they were like, "Oh my gosh, you know, we lost and." We're falling back to the 80s. To the 80s? <laughs> what, what are y'all talking about? <laughs> you must be talking about 1980 when we won the championship and it was ready to hit, you know, go for another. Come on. People oh, are man. going people, Man, it, like, the, the, the panicking is ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, man. All of yes. a sudden, all of a sudden, uh, we, you know, is dive straights all of a sudden, you know, ah, oh, Bobo is that this Bobo's <laughs> fault, right? Everything was crazy. You mean you mean the Bros Award nominee? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh man, they get the news about the news about you know, we got some more news coming up. Yeah, you know, definitely news get, to talk they about. Get, they get recruiting news, and you know, they 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 want to jump off the they want to jump off the boat. And you know, it's like just relax. Well, relax. Boss, look, we can we, still, we can we still, we still getting the best kids in the country. Yes, that fit our program. Yes, one hundred percent. And we and we and, and we got a we have an undefeated regular season team coming back. Yes. You know, most of most of the guys from that team, like, and then we have guys that were hurt that's coming back. You know. Some some studs, yes. You dig that that are coming back. Like we're gonna be fine. Just relax. <laughs> no, relax. these people are like Chicken Little, man. They running around screaming, heads cut off. The sky's falling. The sky's falling. Bama, you know, Bama got us. Bama going always get us. And I'm like, y'all gotta relax that thing. But then, obviously, we get the big news, and we can start talking about this. Like I said, Graham Coffee's gonna come on. One of our partners is gonna come on. He's gonna help. Uh, you know, add a little bit more context to this, but we get news that the number one recruit in Georgia's class, mind you, the number one recruiting class in the nation that was that was almost dang near bound to break records. Um, he's taking visits and he's taking a visit to Nebraska. Nothing has been settled yet. And as we all know, Nebraska was one of his finalists to begin with. He's got family there. Um, his dad is familiar with that area up there. Right. So that is on the table. But here's the key. There's always another team on the table for a recruit. The bottom oh. line is, is that Georgia has to do what Georgia has to do to recruit the best players that it can recruit. And, it, and after that's done, the decision's in the hands of the player. So the player that we are talking about, Dylan Riola, yes, the number, well, he was the number one quarterback when he was committed to Georgia. I mean, by the, you know, in, in the last few months, a lot of, a couple guys have passed him up. Uh, Jillian Sayan has passed them up. Um, there's a you know some other ones out there, but what are your thoughts, man? What are your early thoughts on all of this? Because again, people think the sky is falling just because one guy has maybe decided to maybe take a different course of his own life. The sky was falling when we named uh, uh, Stetson Bennett starter for the dog. <laughs> right. <laughs> How did that turn out? Facts. How did it turn out twice? <laughs> Facts. <laughs> the sky's always falling, you know, with, with Georgia football. So, you know, I'm I'm not surprised. Um, but people have to relax, you know. Uh you do like more times than not, it does take a uh a, a good effort from your quarterback to win and to win big. Um, so you want the best talent you can get in house, um, at that position, but, um, Georgia is a well-rounded program. 
you know. And also, first of all, now, now, granted, typically nowadays in recruiting where there's smoke, there's fire. Um, but at the same time, the kid is the kid hadn't signed nowhere. The you know the kid is you know he's still he's still committed to Georgia. You know what I mean? It was you know it would be it would be very easy for him to decommit. You know, True. and just put and just put it out there. You know what I mean? So until he decommits, he's committed to Georgia, and um, we love to have him. You know, talented kid, talented arm. You know what I mean? He's he has it together upstairs. Um, we love to have him. In the event that he chooses another institution, um, Georgia's still gonna be fine. You know, hopefully we get Beck back. You know, still got you know Gunner in the fold, mm -hmm. um, who I've heard great things about. Um, and we still um, we still have Ron Puglisi. Yes, you know, sir. In the fold, you know, as far as commits go, you know, so, um, you know, um, it's it's hard for me to get riled up about a teenager that made. I, 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 got, I have teenagers, <laughs> right? I have I have kids his age. <laughs> listen, <laughs> listen. Let me tell you, you know, they 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 are a trip. You know what I mean. Yeah. Including world class athletic uh high school football players. They're all a trip. Yeah. You know what I mean? So they 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 make the decisions that they feel are best for them. Hopefully they make informed decisions. And um and as adults in this thing, uh that I like to I like to emphasize that as an adult, <laughs> I wish <laughs> all, I wish them all well. I don't do that creepy stuff that oh, we find man. adults doing on, online. I mean, online. Some of the stuff is outrageous, man. I mean, they calling the kid trash. They saying, you know, he's all, all of a sudden he's not a five star. All, all of a sudden old. he's not good. Like, uh, that's you know, a, and I, 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 I've, seen I him, I've seen him throw the ball. Yeah, he can swing it, right? And, <laughs> yeah. and I'll be the first one to tell you. I'll be the first one to tell you, Foss. When I was always big on Ryan Puglisi. And here's the reason why I was big on him was because I like his toughness. He kind of reminds you of like Brett Favre. You know what I'm saying? I, I kind of like that style of quarterback to begin with. But I do like the way he's always stayed settled and committed. That's the one reason I like him. Even when he, you know, he committed early, right? Yeah. He never backed down from a challenge. He went to the Elite 11. Obviously, he didn't even get the, the top billing that a guy like, like uh, Dylan got. Um, and at the same time, I'm sold on Dylan. Awesome player, man. The, the boy's going to ball out no matter where he goes. It does not matter. He's got that type of talent. He's a generational type of talent. I wish him the best, but I'm going to be an adult no matter what. I'm never going to clown a kid, never going to down a kid. People would be surprised at how many individuals, how many student athletes right now that have either flipped their commitment from Georgia or you know, never even committed to Georgia that I actually, you know, talk to, man. I mean, DM that back and forth. Oh, thanks for, I appreciate you for this. I appreciate you for that. If you follow me on, 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 uh, on, um, on, on the X, you'll see it. I'm interacting with some of these kids. Cause I just want the best for their lives, man. We all want, you know, society to be a better, you know, to be a better place for these individuals to grow up, become great men, great men in their communities, great family, you know, great husbands, great fathers, all these great things. So why, like clown these dudes right now while they're in the midst of making a decision that'll impact the rest of their lives. And man, it's, it just, it's mind boggling to me. The highest level, especially now, man, it's just, a, it's a, it's a different, it's a different game now, man. Yeah. Like you can, you can make a decision that, you know, like you say, impacts the rest of their lives. Yeah. Like if, if these, if these numbers and stuff that I'm hearing, <laughs> are legitimate like around the country with these players can make listen 99.9 .9 of them will never see an nfl locker room no that is a fact if you can make life-changing money to enter the world with after you graduate 
and by, by making a decision on where to go to school to play <laughs> to play a sport, right? Listen, do it. Make the best decision for you. I, I'm I'll never be mad. I'm ne- I'll never be mad at that. Yeah. You know what I mean? These you know is you can get educated anywhere in the country. You know what I mean? And, mm-hmm. and, and you now, if your goal is for a national championship, I'm gonna keep it a bean. You, there's only a few places you can get that done, potentially. There's, you know, Georgia's one of them. If, if you're looking for, if you're looking for, if you're looking to be, you know, a champion, get some hardware, all that good stuff. Yes, there's only a few places, maybe a handful, on a good year, maybe six, seven. We'll see with the new playoff and all that stuff. Yes, but if your goal is the next level. If your goal is to get a bag, it's a lot of people can do that for you. Like they, you know, I've, you know, I've, when I was a scout, I've, you know, interviewed Division three kids, Division two kids, you know, you know, kids from, uh, uh, like what is Hobart? Yeah, what, what was uh, Ali Marpet from? Like, I, I, <laughs> I, I, I thought, like, like, if you can ball, we'll find you. You know what I mean? <laughs> You know, so I don't care where these kids go, man. Make let them make the best choice for them because all their goals, you know, with the exception of maybe winning at the highest level, can be done, can be reached anywhere. And if they can do that while had in their pockets, listen, go do it. Go do it. Because I, I didn't I didn't enjoy the broke days. You know, it ain't fun being <laughs> broke. <laughs> you know, you know, Not at all, brother. No, it ain't, it ain't. It ain't. It ain't. It ain't fun. You know, I found ways to get some bread in college. You know what I mean? I, I was never. You know, I was never. You know, oh man, I can't eat today. You know, but there was there, there was moments where, you know, I ain't have a, a ton. You know what I mean? If these kids can, these kids can go to school and, and find a place for them where they got to worry about that stuff. And and then possibly and, and some of the some of the really good kids can make like really really life changing long term like I I know kids their kids with, with real estate before mm-hmm. they leave college <laughs> you know what I mean I had to get a sign up bonus first before I bought, <laughs> before, I, before I bought a house you know what I mean these kids right. you know these kids are able they're putting themselves in position. And a lot of them are very smart. They put themselves in a very, in a very good position to move forward in life, you know. So I'm, I'll never be mad at those decisions. Graham, welcome yes. to the show, baby. Thank hey, you. man, Thank you. You, you, you come in right before our guest is probably getting ready to come I on. Know, so I sorry. know what's going to happen, and it happens every time. Every time you really get into the to the crux of what you're trying to say, <laughs> <'cause> like, <laughs> our guest True, is like man. enough of that nonsense. So yeah. Welcome to the show, man. Welcome back. How you how you been, man? I'm good, man. I'm good. Yeah, sorry. I had a, another meeting. I was in the, a work meeting that ran over, but I am happy to be here. And uh, yeah, excited for our guest. And uh, it's just crazy, man. I tweeted Graham, this. Graham, I got to cut you off. See? We're good. We're good. It's perfect. Graham, I, Graham, I, I can totally get rolling, dog. It's I, Graham was about to, I, but I knew you was about to hear us with some real fire. You know what I mean? <laughs> And then we got we got this dude coming on, man. Hey, he's George, you, you got to do what you do, man. You you got to do what you got to do. You got to introduce our, our next guest. Uh, you know what we do with the you know on the One Hundred Sanford podcast? We bring the best. We bring the people that can bring that fire that can light this thing up. So, George, do you know do the honors today, man? I ain't got much to say, man. We got the great Bomani Jones joining joining us today, man. Uh, a man that uh, he's 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 literally he's he's one of the more intelligent people that I know, and but he you know it depending on who you are, he ain't gonna make you feel like a dummy. You know he, can talk, <laughs> he, he, he you know he you know, he can get his point across. Now if you want to get if you want to go <laughs> there, you know. He could cut you up pretty. He could fillet you real good. Oh, so I, I felt like that just watching him on TV sometimes. 
<laughs> yeah, I prefer not to do it to people. You know what I mean? But sometimes people just feel like you they with, got to You me. withhold pretty well. And people don't, <laughs> people just get the, when you cut them, when you dice and people up, that's what goes viral. <laughs> More often than not, you know, Bo, he, he spares the people. You know, <laughs> I got nicer over the years, man. Like I just had to kind of fall back and just kind of realize, <laughs> like it was one thing when I was the people's champ. Now people think I'm the man. It don't go over the same way. <laughs> you know? Like when I was an up and cover, people found it to be charming. <laughs> yeah, you 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 the man now. You know, you you big media. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's exactly it. I am old school now. I'm getting a lot more unk. <laughs> like what you, what, you, what you just call hey. me, homie. You are unk now. I, I just like I am unk, man. Yeah, but, but I've asked have... you this about unk. I wonder if you feel the same way about unk. I don't have a problem with unk. I just want to know what happened to sir. Like I feel like I've lived a life and I've Dude. earned my way up to sir. What I, happened to sir? I have I have just accepted it now, man. It it really hit home with me when I my last year playing ball. I was in, I was with the Colts, and it was a couple guys from Middle Georgia that were on the team, and they was like, man, we we, we used to watch you in middle school. And I was like, <laughs> you talking about? We used to watch you in middle school. Did you used to watch me play high school ball in middle school? Or are you talking about you used to watch me in the league in middle school? It's like, what, what are you talking about here? And man, people be calling me Unc, OG. Now, I do have an old soul. I, I, you know, yeah. there, are people, there are people that call me Big Bro that they don't, I don't know if they realize that they're older than me. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? But uh it's all good. I'm happy to be here. You know right. what I mean? I, I grow hey, growing old is awesome. I don't feel hey. awesome all the time, but it's <laughs> it's cool. What's, what's the black black thought line of a growing ass man out of pay by dudes? Learn the rules, little homie. You can be one too. See, yes, that, they don't understand how real that line is. Like man, know, one day real. you can be like this. Yep. But we're glad to have you on here, man. A man that can talk about a plethora of things. But right around here on 100 Sanford, we talk college football, you know, college sports. We dibble and dabble in a few other sports. But we get to the nitty gritty. We keep it light, but we keep it, we keep it right. You dig? You know, no fluff. You know how you doing, man? Dude, man, I'm good. I just got through recording the pod with uh, Van Lathan. We were talking about Dion. Like, we, I'm in this. I feel like I, I hate this so much, man. For some reason, white people think we don't watch college football. I don't understand. Like, when I, worked <laughs> at ESPN, I mean, but it was a thing when I worked at ESPN where my agent, I, I tried so hard to get involved in the college football coverage. And my agent mm -hmm. would tell people, and they'd always be like, oh, I didn't know Bomani watched college football. But you don't actually know anything about me. Why is this the thing that, like, jumps <laughs> off the page at you? They just can't conceptualize the idea. So anytime I get to like talk college football with black people that, you know, like the Dion thing was weird because, you know, I was college football conversation with black people who didn't watch college football. This is a little bit of a different situation. So I am thrilled <laughs> to be here. Um, you are a, uh, we can call you a recovering uh, Texas recovering. Longhorn fan. Uh, you could choose or choose not to divulge why you're recovering. Oh, no, I'm going to tell it because I need everybody to understand this. Like, I'm glad I got 05, right? I got 05 out of the deal. But, hey, man, I felt like a sucker after they went like they did about that damn eyes of Texas. And the boys are like, hey, man, you know, it kind of feels degrading to us. We'd appreciate it if, they let you, if you guys would stop. And they're like, nah, not only we're not going to stop, you're going to stand here and you're going to salute this song after every game. And so now every time they do something good, I'm reminded of what they think about me when I would rather just kind of like, let it slide and just talk this up to something that we have mutually in common. And so I just like, I can't, I can't be who I am in this world and still, and still be out here riding for this. Now I'll admit it was a lot easier to do that when they was out here going six and six, seven and five, right? Yeah. Like it wasn't too, it wasn't, mm -hmm. it wasn't that hard to quit when that was going on. <laughs> um, but when, uh, when Sark took the job and it was very clear that they told him, you're going to say at this press conference that we go see in the eyes of Texas. I was just kind of like, man, I can't rock with y'all. And then it didn't feel bad because that was seven wins Sark at the time. Like, that's what they called him when he was at Washington, right? And I was like, oh, okay, I mean, how far is this really going to go? Apparently, to the to the playoff, boys, Sark got that. Sark learned some things down there in Tuscaloosa. It got that thing coming. What, 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 you, what you think about him, man? They, uh, what I want to know, and I, and I wrote this down to ask you, is it fool's gold, or do you know enough about him to say 
if it, is it fool's gold or is it real? What do you think? So this is my thing with them is that the fall of the Texas football program, and this is something that you know, with UGA, you guys could relate to because the same thing was going on at the same time. Georgia was able to do enough stuff around it. But where you go one of these 10-year stretches where you don't produce any NFL offensive linemen or like mm-hmm. barely any, and, you, and, and in the state of Texas in particular, it just didn't make any sense where they were just getting hammered at the line of scrimmage. Like, to, you know, yeah. make it relevant to Georgia again. That 90s run of playing against Spurrier. Spurrier wasn't beating them with his brilliant offensive scheme. Them boys were mauling them at the line of scrimmage on both sides. And Texas had become a program that was weak on the line of scrimmage. The boys do not look weak on the line of scrimmage no more, Jack. Uh, no. That, that, that does not seem to be the issue to put that, that in, they got. To put that in perspective and just because I, I'm, I'm part of this stretch, before Isaiah Wynn, went in the first round who was the last first round lineman they had if i'm not mistaken i'm talking to him right now you are that correct middle, that middle school player <laughs> yeah that stretch <laughs> that was like a it's like 15 years 15 years, years? Yeah. Yeah. 15 years that's unheard of like, you don't win you can't win championships like that Mm-mm. like you Mm-mm. gotta you gotta pump out first and second round uh trench guys consistently to yep. be in that, that, in, in, that Kirby we, we era, in that Kirby era, them names started rolling out there. Andrew Thomas oh, yeah. starts coming <laughs> off the line, right? And it starts going. Yeah. Texas, like Charlie Strong got Connor Williams in. I think that was the first one they'd had. The Cosme dude that plays for Washington now was a Texas guy. But even then, like, you have to get that straight. Even in the Big 12, where you think you don't need that stuff. Oh, no, no, no. You need it. And to go to the SEC, they really need it. Because my read on Texas going to the SEC was, Otherwise, they never get any players because the SEC West was just coming in and taking all the good players from Texas. But now, finally, they have an incentive and they have to be good because they'll get embarrassed over here in a much different way. Like getting embarrassed in the Big 12, people come over and laugh and say you're not good. You come over here and get embarrassed in the SEC. Y'all going to be on the big game a lot because you got the biggest fan base in the conference. People going to be watching you get your ass whooped week after week after week. <laughs> <laughs> and, they, and they changed a lot. They changed how they do things at the stadium. They they, they have ramped really? up the environment all because they don't want to get embarrassed when they come over there to that real. So, so they changed so they changed the whole like like the whole experience. Yeah, you know, because they had a rep. It's a bit of a library um, there in Austin. It's the rep that they'd always had. You go watch these games now just on TV. It feels different. That's funny because I don't, you know, Graham went there. Um, that's what Georgia used to be. Yeah. Even when even winning 10 games, 10 winning 10 wins a year, it didn't matter. It was not the same experience as it is now at a Georgia mm-hmm. game. Them games lit now. <laughs> when I say lit, they got the, the 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 LED lights and the whole place turned red, and they playing Pastor Troy, and you know, all, like it 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 really goes down in Georgia now. It was a country club when I went there. No, I think there's two levels to it, right? I think one of them is producing the television product, right? Like how this looks, because the SEC football looks different on television than anybody else's. When that game starts at 3.30 on CBS, it doesn't matter which stadium it is. When they got that shot and the sun shining, they pan on the field and then they come out and they show the crowd, it don't look like that at Pac-12 games. It it, It doesn't feel that same way in any of these other places like it does in the SEC. And so if you walked in, as that went more and more, recruits are not just watching that, they go into the games, right? Like at Auburn, they still ain't found no new rap songs since that young jock came out, but somebody <laughs> told them, y'all gonna need to play some of this rap out here because these boys, that's what they want in Georgia. You know, mm-hmm. there's some, some weird stuff at Georgia about what players they do and don't want and what positions or whatever and the history that comes with that, but they looked up at one point and was like, baby, we try to win. These boys like this rowdy music. We gonna need to play some of it. And when Nick Saban shows up in your conference, everything has to change because Nick Saban don't give a damn what your school used to do, right? We gonna do what needs to be done to get these boys. He went down to LSU and changed everything about what they were in terms of race and perception and all of that because he's like, y'all want to win or not? Okay, cool. This is what we gonna do. <laughs> well, Bo, we got let, let's we got to ask this question immediately because I know our fan base is going to want to know. Georgia's not in the college football playoffs. Texas is. And you know, you're talking about Texas. Does Texas deserve to get in over Georgia, the defending back-to-back national champions? And as you talk about, 
them boys in Georgia that are doing big. I'm not gonna like this answer. I'm going to. I'm going. You're not going to like the answer, but I think you will like it more than you think it will. You will at the beginning, right? It's really hard to be as good as they have been for three straight years. It's just really tough. And you go look at every school that's tried to do that third run, that that third year in the run. That, and I'm just going off the top of my head. Um, 19 or 2002 Miami is a great example that one that lost against Ohio State but if you go look that whole season it didn't quite feel right like they they had a, they, their defense wasn't good that year which is strange but it's something it felt just a little bit off right like like all the all the games and all the pressure just seemed to wear on them and something was just a little bit off and as good as they were to win all the games they never felt quite like the dominant team they had felt like the couple of years before that 2005 USC people were trying to say that was the best team of all time at the time but not anybody that was actually watching them they were not nearly as good as they were the year before and it was a similar case so yeah you got Liner in his fifth year you got Reggie Bush and Lindell White in their third years and Dwayne Jarrett and all of that but there was just something about trying to maintain that they almost lost that game to Notre Dame where Reggie Bush had to push him in they I mean that Reggie Bush game against Fresno State they almost lost to Fresno State right Mm. It's just hard to do it in that third year. And I think for Georgia, especially with everything, like, you know, with all the stuff with, like, the the, the street racing stuff and everything else, like, the boys went through a lot in the course of this yeah. last year. And they they did not have that defining win. Um, 2013 Alabama is another example where they lost that crazy game to Auburn at the end, but they got to the end of that year without having that big win that got them there. And Texas got a win over Alabama. That's a funny win. Because it seemed like a big deal at the time, and then it didn't seem like a big deal because we thought Alabama was going to be sorry. And then Nick was like, what if I go 12 and 1? What you got now, boys? And that's that becomes the argument right there. Yeah, I felt the same way about it. Um, I felt like I felt like college football, the powers that be wanted Bama in. Regardless, like they're gonna all they're gonna always want Bama in. That's a that's a win win if you get Bama in the playoffs. But you can't put Bama in this year and not take Texas. So who right. does that kick out? Georgia, and it kicks out yeah. for Florida State. You know what I mean? So it was it once we that Georgia. We I didn't think about it till the other day. I was talking to you know my boy uh, Scudder. You know Scudder. Oh yeah. Um, we was like, man, the Georgia loss screwed up everything. <laughs> just me thinking, the Georgia yeah. lost like it it set off a whole thing of dominoes and it just messed up it messed up the whole thing and uh like sorry FSU us losing screwed you too yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean so it's my favorite um, thing on that is Florida State trying to use that is that we need to get out the ACC and it's like baby it ain't even about that man y'all just <laughs> y'all just hot uh, man out it's, yeah. it's hard like just figure that dude, out dude not you this 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 year this offseason, this um postseason, it really, it really let us know how big Bama is. Georgia was on top of the world for two, almost three whole years. Biggest, like we're the biggest thing smoking. And then we got a reminder that, that <laughs> them folks right there, that juggernaut over there, that's been rolling for how, how long now with Saban. Oh. Uh, allow me to take a moment to point that out because i think this is i I think people have underestimated how cold this has been right so you remember that first year when he got there and i think they went like six and six they went to the independence bowl but what Mm -hmm. people don't realize about that year was they lost uh to georgia by three points they lost to florida state by seven they lost to LSU by seven. They lost to Mississippi State by five. They lost to Louisiana Monroe because Saban always had one of those weirdos early by seven. They lost to Auburn by seven. All one loss game. I mean, one score games. And then from there, since that has happened, they have, and I am not exaggerating here, finished in the top 10 15 years in a row. And it's going to be 16 when you add this one off. That's it's silly. Yeah. How in the <laughs> world? How in the world do you do that? And on top of that, the one team they had that didn't feel that good, that 2010 team that lost three games, right? They lost They lost to Jordan Jefferson. They lost to Jordan Jefferson twice. That's a whole nother story. But they lost to South Carolina, lost to LSU, and then the crazy game to Auburn where Cam brought them back that year. Mm-hmm. 
you say, hey, that team wasn't very good. And they went out there and beat Michigan State so bad. And Michigan State had Kirk Cousins. And his mother beat, I, that's when I broke the beat them down out for the first time because it was so sad <laughs> to watch it. That was a bad Alabama team. They showed up in the ball game and won by like 45 points. Yeah, And they uh, had uh, hold, hold, a dozen hold, hold future like NFL, you know, yes. multi-year starters on the line of scrimmage. Yes. Yes. And that's well. before Saban really got it rolling. That's the 1.0 Saban. No, <laughs> right. Well, yeah, right. we, we got a reminder that how what they mean, not only how good they are on the field, but just the brand. Yes. The brand got them in the playoffs this year. I don't care. I don't care what nobody say. The brand right. put them where they are. And the brand just happened to be able to push Texas in there, too, because yes. Texas put that Texas put that thing on. I don't care what nobody say. That was a, that was a that was a world class beating. So you could not tell me we weren't going to do the same to them. Mm. <laughs> you know, and I got surprised. <laughs> they got better, man. Like Jalen Milrow, H Town, by the way, just want to throw that out there. He what got a, a H Town, H Town, Jalen Milrow, H Town, H Town. Yeah, you know, H -town. H -town. again, this is what this is why Texas had to join the SEC. <laughs> like we got to slow this <laughs> stuff down. But Milrow, I don't know how that boy has any time to study his playbook with all that time he clearly spent lifting weights. Like he is, he's a running he back, Jack dog, yeah, like a running back. But he got better. He got yeah. better, and he's like, it's basically going to be an incomplete pass or a big play. Like, they figured out how to cut out the in-between sort of catastrophic things. And Saban made what I think turned out to be a brilliant move, which was to not start him against South Florida, which I am convinced was entirely Nick Saban shutting people up. They're like, oh, yeah, this boy ain't that good. This boy the problem. He's like, let me show you what else we got out here. I bet y'all won't ask for them boys to come out here ever again. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's funny. That's the well, the boomer bust kind of thing that you were talking about with Milrow is where he proved me wrong in the SEC championship game. Like going into that game, I was like, okay, this is an offense that lives off big passing plays. What has Georgia been really good at not doing under Kirby Smart? Giving up big passing plays. Like they'll be fine. And Georgia did hold them yardage wise to a, a reasonable number. It was like 306, I think, but he was extremely clutch down the stretch of that game when they needed first downs and whether that was with his legs or making tight window throws with his arm on short to intermediate balls like he did what Georgia basically said we're going to force you to do this and if you can do it then we might get beat but we don't believe you can and he did it and he deserves credit for that like he has become a very different player over the last three months. Yeah, I want to know how Alabama just keep rolling the same wide receiver off the assembly line. Like, if you know it's funny, the last five years, all their receivers look exactly the same physically. About <laughs> five, five, ten, somewhere between five, ten and six foot, about 190 to 205, maybe just tanks, mm -hmm. just bowling balls of dudes. That's the exact same guy over and over and over again. You can't do nothing with them. That's what they want. That's what they want. Right, George, we, we got to switch it, man, because see, Bamani, he's going off on Saban, right? Our, our fan base ain't going to like it. We we got we got so many Bama people in our mentions, it's crazy. What are your <laughs> thoughts on Kirby, though? The last few years, and Kirby coming underneath Nick Saban, obviously from Alabama, but the job that he's done the last two to three years, obviously going for a three-peat this year, which fell a little bit short. What are your thoughts on, on, on Kirby Smart? I mean, it's amazing. He is, I mean, already – the best coach in the history of the program, right? Like, no disrespect to Vince, but let's be honest about this. You look at what Kirby has managed to pull off. This program has never been at these heights consistently when it was not centered around Herschel Walker, right? Like, as much as all of us love Vince Dooley, even Vince Dooley ain't stupid about this, right? Like, you know what the clear line of demarcation is, 1980, and I guess they stretched it to 83. But, like, the, clearly we know what time it is with that program. What Kirby has done has t is this – is not the job that Mark Rick took 20 years ago, right? Like the, the ceiling on this program is so much higher because of the ceiling of the population center of Atlanta, the access to talent that there now is, except for the fact that Georgia ain't even recruiting the Atlanta area so much in that way. They are knee deep in the most talented area in the country and they ain't even got to do that. They just go get in whoever it is that they want. And they just keep... Right, right. And they're just like, this is no longer a regional program. It has never been a national program in the way that it is right now. And that's Kirby. My question about Kirby is, 
at some point, the offense is going to have to become a little bit more daring. Like, that's my thought at some point, except they won two national championships with Stetson Bennett when I thought that that wasn't possible either. But it felt a lot like he was playing like the beta version of Saban Ball, that 1.0 version. You wonder when the 2.0 is going to come, or or maybe not, because I don't even have to look at the roster and know they're just going to roll out here next year with a bunch of cold ass dudes. That's going to make this look just like they did the year before. Like, they're not going to have Bowers, obviously, and that's going to hurt. There'll just be some other super fast guy. Like, George Pickens, up there killing it with the Steelers when he can get his mind right. George Pickens is down there in Georgia being really talented and us wondering if he was ever going to put it together. And it didn't matter. They just give the ball to somebody else. Yeah. I think I think George is in a space where uh, I think they have opened it up a little bit. You know, they rank. They've been in the top. Top 10. 10 yeah. to top seven yeah. offenses in the country the last three, four years or whatever. And um, but I think I think we're at the situ we're at the we're at the cross point in I think all of sports, really, because I, I watch it in basketball too, where it got so much finesse that bully ball really works now. Mm. You know what I mean? Like I, it kind of, it kind of, the light bulb <clears throat> kind of went off with the the twenty twenty Lakers. They were bigger than everybody. I know this is basketball, but it, it, it's gonna make sense to you. They were so big that it didn't matter. And yes, you call it bubble or whatever. They had to play them games, and they were just so much bigger than everybody with Dwight and Javale and whoever else they whoever else had out there. And it kind of nullified the finesse game. So the thing is now when when these teams these teams in football are built for finesse, built to stop the pass, built to be fast, and you get a team that comes in that can bludgeon you and you don't have anything to stop it. You know, and so that's what I think is happening now with the teams that, you know, that ultimately win it. You know what I mean? They can they can bludgeon you if they need be, like Georgia did the last couple of years. I think that's the thing that people lose sight of, man. And you, you know, you guys got more actual football background than me, but I don't care what the analytics or anything tell people. Getting hit in the mouth over and over again, man. That's undefeated, dog. (laughs) You can tell me how many more yards you can get than anything else. I just can't imagine the feeling of just lining up and you know they just going to lean on us all day long, man. And there's nothing we can do about it. (laughs) What do you – uh? What do you think about uh okay, playoff is going to what is it twelve? Twelve teams. Thumbs up, thumbs down. Wow. You know, I'm all out on the playoff completely. Um, because I just don't think it Yes. It's a it's a television attraction. It doesn't give you a truer champion, right? Like the more rounds you play, the more likely it is a good team loses. You know, like like having a conference championship game, for example, I'm a Big 12 fan. We don't watch so many teams from the Big 12 get knocked out because they had to play this extra game. That extra game, that 03 Oklahoma team that looked like the best team I had ever seen. Got knocked out in that game. They still made it. But you know what I mean? The same idea just kind of cuts down on your chances. And so they can go to 12 if they want to. But, man, the number 12 team ain't got no business stepping on the field in most seasons with the number five team that we're going to see in these rankings, especially not if they get like some kind of break to prepare. Because that's what was killing when Alabama would go out there and play against Michigan State or Washington, having a month to get ready. I'm just like, bro, y'all ain't got no chance for this, man. Like, you give these people a month to cook up a game plan and they got better players. Like, this just ain't going to happen. So they can add to it and it'll add more television inventory. But I just don't feel like it's going to add to our overall level of enjoyment of it. Like, I think it's better for the coaches to not have 12. Because when you don't make the playoffs and it's only four, it's not that big a deal. When you be like, yo, you've been here seven years and you ain't you ain't been in the top 12 once. Like now suddenly Lane Kiffin stopped looking like a success and start looking like, hey, man, you can't just get up over that little line right there. Well, so you talked about the level of enjoyment, but what about, OK, so you're out on the college football playoffs, but you got the portal, which everybody's talking about. You know, this is disrupting my level of enjoyment. I'm losing this player, losing that player. What are your thoughts on the portal? What's your thoughts on NIL? Because that's really changing college athletics, even though it's been it's been a long time coming. But what are your thoughts? 
my big thought on like I think the most unique or interesting thought I have about NIL is we need to make sure these boys ain't getting like robbed on these contracts because a lot of these contracts are better looking like payday loans where they giving these dudes <laughs> a little bit of money right now and then they saying they're gonna get a cut of their money once they get to the league or the next level of their lives like we're gonna I think we're gonna come back on the back end and find out a lot of guys have been stolen from in a way that's terribly uncomfortable uh the transfer portal the hypocrisy of allowing coaches to leave whenever they wanted to, but players had to wait a year necessitated this world where now the players can leave after a year. It is my belief that a lot of terrible decisions are being made. And I don't, I don't think this is, I don't think this is helping these players. Right. Like, so I think about Quinn Ewers, for example, who left Ohio state when he lost that job to CJ Stroud and he came to Texas. It worked out okay. That's fine. Got you. That dude could have been throwing, like, throwing to Xavier Worthy is cool, but that dude could have been throwing to Marvin Harrison Jr. this year. He still would have got that job. He, Whatever his draft situation was going to be, was going to be exactly the same. All you got to do is put up one year of good film. Go ask Joe Burrow. Go ask Cam Newton. Like, you don't have to have all these years of film. You don't need to play all these years. And I think that long term for these players, like, George, you tell me if I'm wrong here. Being at Georgia for four years allowed you to make the relationships and things that have guided like the direction of your life, right? And put you in positions where there's people looking out for you that would not have looked out for you if you had just stayed there for a year and then bounced to go somewhere else, or you had showed up late and you were the guy who transferred in to be on the SEC champion, right? Like that's not that's not the same. I've been looking at these dudes like, don't you want a car dealership? You ain't gonna get no car dealerships <laughs> bouncing around all these places, man. They would be so much better mm-hmm. off sticking around and y'all not going to the league. That's the other point. If I felt like these dudes were doing all this bouncing and then they go go to the league, like you're just going somewhere to play somewhere else. What are you talking about? That just doesn't make any sense to me. But that's where we are. And so with the portal, everybody has the right to make bad decisions. But I think we need to be honest about the fact that this portal is leading to a lot of terrible, terrible, terrible decisions. I think that I think that part of it needs to be highlighted. It is twofold for me. I'm 100 percent or the portal just because you get to make a decision on that affects your life, whether it be good or bad. Hell, everybody gets to make decisions good or bad. That's going to affect their life. Why cut it off at a kid that's making the decision on where to uh, play football, where to lend his talents to. So yes, I'm all, I'm 100% for it. I think the bad decisions Maybe even if it's just – it doesn't have to be – you know, we don't have to name names. But maybe, hey, put those numbers out there. Like, who finds who finds a home? Put it out there. Like, let these kids know. You know, it's just it's the same way with how how you find out your draft status. You know, lean up into it. Like, hey, I'm, a, I'm thinking about going to the league. Send your name in. You come back. Uh, you're, uh, John, you're a seven-round pick if you came out this year. John knows to sit his ass at back at <laughs> whatever state university he's at. He knows he's got the info. I think I think there needs to be something in the place like that for the portal. Maybe it is. Maybe I don't know how to, how it goes now with putting your fillers out there for you know portal action or whatever. But I, I tell you what, it's it can be scary. And it, it's a lot of kids that go unpicked. And like in 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 my in my mind, I think it's it's unfortunate, and I don't know how you don't know and, and why anybody didn't put it in your didn't give you the, I guess the knowledge that hey you ain't really like that. Yeah, you know that, nobody I'm, wants to tell these. Like some, yeah, everybody yeah, thinks they going to the league. Like yeah, nobody wants needs, to be the person to tell a kid. It ain't for you, right? Like I've been there working as a college professor, and you don't want to be the one to be like, "Yo, you just need to drop this class, dog." You ain't really <laughs> <laughs> economics ain't for you, right? Like you don't you don't want to be the person, but you're right. Somebody got to be the one to be Somebody like. Somebody got to tell like, them you ain't like that. I, and going stay pro and something other than sports. You, you got a, you got a scholarship right here, and you know at a great university, um, you might play, you might not. But I'm telling you, if you don't, if, if you're not. If you're not playing here now, if you now if you leaving to go get a bag, go get it because ninety nine percent of ninety nine point nine percent of these kids not going to NFL. And I explained it earlier in the show. 
that if you can get some life changing money to enter this world with, because this world is an MF. -er. Yes. You know, if, yes. If, if, if you can get some life changing money to enter this world with, assuming you took care of and all that, um, that most college kids, college graduates don't have, go do that. You know, because you're not guaranteed to make it in, to this league. You know what I mean? If you're leaving to go get a bag from somewhere, um, go do that. If you're leaving because you ain't playing, and you and you and you leaving and you think you're trying to stay in division one because you ain't playing and power and p5 because you ain't playing if you ain't playing at georgia you're probably not gonna play at auburn you're probably not gonna play at clemson you're probably not gonna play at florida state you need to you know be real with yourself and somebody need to tell these kids hey you're not like that and and they need to point out who the kids are that's in the portal that are like that <laughs> <laughs> they get they getting picked first well you George. know what i mean here you go, because this is a, this is a great transition. Because didn't Dion tell a bunch of kids that they weren't like that? Yeah, so but I he wanted... told, it, but but he told them kids they was like that before he even looked at them. Like some of the, <laughs> some of the dudes he told wasn't like that. They was more like it than they replacements. Like the offensive linemen that he ran out of there, they was they, they wasn't like. Could have been worse than what they had. Right, man. they right. wasn't saying they was like that. They was like, no, we we like this. We we are we are like this, and he ran them off. But I say this about Dion. Dion would have built this program forty percent transfers, forty percent grad transfers, and then twenty percent high school recruits. And I mean, this is a generalization. I'm not. 100% like precise on what I'm about to say here, but you telling me that 80% of your roster is quitters. Yeah. Like some of them yeah. were some of them were making an upgrade and getting in these places, but you're getting a whole lot of quitters out here, man. And I do think yeah. that there's something to looking at it like beyond just the pragmatics of trying to make a football team or whatever. I think there's something truly about, hey, this is a challenge. I'm going to try to, I'm going to make this happen. I want to do this here. I'm about to get it done. Like there's, there's something to that that is very important. And mm -hmm. I thought that if you didn't want to leave so bad that you were willing to sacrifice a year, you probably needed to stay. I never, I never thought about it in this way. Um, and it's odd because it, uh, this is, it's my story. Um, I didn't play it right away. I got red shirted. Um, probably got my first start in my <clears throat> red shirt sophomore year. Didn't start the whole year. Um, then I started for real my red shirt, red shirt. Um, junior year, or or no, redshirt freshman year, my first start. Redshirt sophomore year, um, probably started for real. You know, all the games. Then my redshirt junior year comes, we get a transfer in, and we got three senior tackles that are pretty good. And so I start rotating. Me, John Stinchcomb, Kareem Marshall. You know, and then, and then you know, even the question came up when I was going into the draft. Why you rotate? You know, you pretty you pretty good player. And my ask questions what is is I don't know. You know what I mean? Any most kids and that was in my situation in 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 college, because you know, there were times when I thought I should have been playing, you know, more than I was, or should have been playing, period, or should have been starting. Um, and people would get people would definitely be in my ear, like, man, why why are old boys, you know, why you ain't the dude? And like, I don't know. I just love playing ball and I'm going to go work and see where it takes me. You know, it could be the league or whatever the case may be, but I might've had, I don't think people know. I might've had, I don't remember the real number. I think it's an odd number. So it's either like 11 or 13 starts my entire college career. I was the 20th pick in the draft. I don't think people, I don't think the new people know that. People think, you know, you know, George, George Foster, uh, all SEC, blah, blah. I wasn't all nothing. I wasn't all SEC, wasn't all American. I just played hard and played ball and minded my business and stayed eligible. <laughs> <laughs> and, That's so and like, crucial. <laughs> and, and I was the first lineman taken off that team over the all Americans of all that. I was the second tackle. Uh, overall in, in my draft class. You know what I mean? I understand if you want to leave. I am a proponent of kids leaving if they want to leave. But I can tell you, you better make the right decision. You know, I got a close friend that, you know, you know, you know I don't think he minds me saying that. He probably wish he had stayed at Georgia. 
because the coach that he was going to go play for came to Georgia anyway. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, he left to go play for another coach, and he ended up coming to Georgia, and he was stuck out there. And I, I feel like and I feel like he was a good player. He was good enough to get some run at Georgia eventually. You know what I mean? Now, now granted, we, I couldn't think in the way these kids think now because the option wasn't there. You know, but the same, but the same, but but the the premise is still there, that you have to go to a place that you know you roll the dice and you hope it's the right decision. But um, it, a lot of good can happen with staying with your program. It's happened with the Georgia. Like, who who are those those kids uh that went in the first round for Georgia a couple of years ago? You had uh, what's my man um for the uh, Packers. Quay Walker. Quay Walker. Oh, yeah, that was Walker. his first year starting. I think, was, year. I think that was Tendall's first year starting. Yeah. I think that um like did uh that was um hey oh Jalen Carter did he start he started one year one year yeah I well, think Jalen Carter look at what that's how bad Stetson Bitter watered it now I like you no know, like no, was, nobody thought yeah, he would yeah. do anything but the idea though even if he never got drafted. There's a car dealership waiting on that boy in Athens. The second he wanted, there's a radio yeah. job waiting on him. Insurance he insurance for the rest yep. of his life. He would never be, yeah. even if they didn't win a national championship, he would never be loved anywhere like he was for the fact that he loved Georgia and he stuck it out there at yeah. Georgia. And, and that's where yeah. there's a long game to be played. Part. Yeah. And, and, there's, and, and, like, and it's a glorious it long game, too. Yo, like, people don't get me. it. There's no grown people. Like, there's grown people to talk to you about that money to make it to the league. But I guess maybe you need more guys, like, just throw a name out there. I don't know if Eric Zire be around all the time, but I bet you Eric Zire show up at Athens, they happy to see him. There's something to be said about having a place where people are happy to see you. Bobo nah, don't get to call his plays you the, at Georgia all these the years. Let me tell you who's the man. David Green. Yep. Let me tell you something. Yeah. <laughs> he, is, he, is, he is him. In Georgia, Lord. he is he is him. You know what I mean. Stetson got some championships. David Green is him. Hey, <laughs> you David, know what I mean. He, he was there for. They the love David Green. He huh? was there for the, he was there for the resurgence. Yeah, they love David Green. You know what I mean. Like it's like, and, and I'm glad you brought that up. These Aaron kids, Murray. Don't, he, oh, Aaron Murray, Aaron, like he's the guy. They love Aaron. <laughs> like when you find you find out how big these kids are when when they invite. When they invite us back, I don't get the same roar as these guys. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But you sit in there and they 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 do they bring you out during the game and they, you know, say 2007 or 2012, uh, all SEC, blah blah blah. Aaron Murray, the crowd gonna go bunkers. You know, the crowd the crowd is gonna go bunkers, and that 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 uh, you can parlay that into a lot. Let me tell you that. You know, I see it happening all the time. You know, DJ Shockley is the mayor around here. DJ Shockley, DJ Shock, DJ Shockley, when he was with the Falcons, they used to call him the mayor. You had you had Michael Vick on that team, and Shock was just as popular. And sat on the oak for four years <laughs> as a high four star, five star recruit. Yeah. Hey, yeah. honestly, came, probably came had no in. business sitting for those four years. No, but David Green. David Green was David there, Green. right? <laughs> he, didn't, he didn't give it up. David Green won a lot of games. He won more games than Peyton Manning, I believe. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? He won a ton of games, and and um and uh it, it worked out for him. But Shock had to sit. Shock came in, won him an SEC championship, got drafted. He's he's doing the news here in town. He's the right. Falcons co. He's the Falcons color guy. He's he's he does games. He does the he does the Bulldogs. You know he parlayed that. He's doing. He doesn't just do football now. He is the <laughs> sports guy for was it is it eleven? Is he eleven or is he channel two or WS? I don't know, but he is the sports. Guy. He's and, he could have and he could have transferred at any point to that and been like, yo, like North Carolina got a spot. And it wouldn't have been the same, man. Huh? It just never would have been the same. He got it at Georgia because he waited. They love and you him definitely not gonna go, And you definitely not going to go transfer in conference and get that same love. <laughs> you know what I mean? I love I love Brock Vandegrift. And I want him to go play. I want him to go, you know, because, you know, I've known his dad for a while and all that. I want the kid to go be successful. 
he's not going to be looked at the same when he comes back. Right. You know what I mean? Especially, especially when he comes to town, you know, for Kentucky the next two, the next two years. And when he's done, they're going to be like, Oh, I remember you, but it ain't going to be like Aaron Murray. <laughs> nope. Hey yeah, man, there's, there's a, there's something to be said for having a place where they're happy to see you. Oh, well, the funny yeah. thing too is uh, Eric Zier and DJ Shockley are both part of the Georgia radio crew for, for all the football games. Like they, yeah, they got a spot. You got a spot. Eric, Z- Eric Zier ain't win a damn thing. The best thing Eric Zier <laughs> did was get a ball to Garrison Hurst. It don't matter, man. They love, like you, you've been here for, and I, I remember what it was such a big deal that they got him in the first place. Right? Like this was, you know, it was, but it's your spot now. And you, you got, I think, these kids in the way that we've made youth sports so transactional, the idea of like committing to an institution is kind of blown. And so, yeah, you shouldn't be blindly loyal to these places. And if they're not doing you right, you should leave. But mm-hmm. if the only problem is I can't get on the field, then get your ass on the field, man. <laughs> but yeah. Ronnie, that leads get me to this. Field. That leads me to this. Cause I know you got to go and we got to, you know, continue to wrap up some things here on our show, but what changes would you make? What would you do if you're, if, if you're in control of college football, when we're talking about the playoffs, we're talking about the portal, we're talking about NIL, life according or college football according to Bomani Jones, what would it be? Pay the players. They don't pay the players now. They let the players get money. Right. Mm-hmm. That's not the same thing. Actually pay the players. Because, see, the thing is, once you actually pay the players, now you can do some stuff around all these things that we're talking about. Like, you got, like you can get in, engaged in different sorts of agreements and start figuring, you know, you – if, if they just paid like everybody else pays people, I think that they would solve a, a great deal of their problems. That's that that will always be my number one. Like I think the NIL discussion has gotten us to a point where we have lost sight of the fact that these kids are still being treated wrong. This is still not what it should be or what it's supposed to be. So I'm still I will I'll be carrying this to the end. We did something on Game Theory, the show I did on HBO. And people didn't realize this, man. Them boys on average are getting less than a thousand dollars off of NIL mm-hmm. across the board. There's a few people getting money at the top, and you see like Caleb Williams doing Wendy's commercials. Man, most of these cats ain't getting no money. You know, the the yeah. money the money they get is from these weirdos who just enjoy paying college players money walking down the street. <laughs> you know, who make I all mean, this money would love nothing more than just put it in some put it in the players' pockets. And it has a and it and and a lot of people feel like that has an expiration date. Like how, some people, everybody wants a return on investment. Yeah. And when when is the return going to happen with the current model? Um, I don't know. <laughs> you know what I mean? And it probably probably never will. And you got kids um, not getting paid that were promised to get paid, mm-hmm. you know, stuff like that. And that's why these that's another reason why these kids are leaving these schools, too. They were promised. Hey, something that they, that's a good yeah. reason. Nice. Yeah. You know, I will leave, too. Look, there was a story about the Pony Express days. And I, the thing I respected about the Pony Express, like the infamous line about we got a payroll to meet, and the origin <laughs> of that line was the NCAA came and caught them, and they're like, all right, no more fan players. And they were like, no, we have a <laughs> payroll to meet. <laughs> Yo, how can, you not, uh, how can you not respect that? They was like, uh, Yo, we told these boys we going to pay them. And like, now e- e- we have e- to e- pay them. E- waiting on this check on Friday. <laughs> Yes, but there was a story. Eric Dickinson about, would leave today. You know? There was a story about halftime of one of those games that one of their star players uh, told them he found out another one was making more money, and he was like, "Give me a raise, or I ain't coming out for the second half." Oh wow! Wow! <laughs> Yo, man, you awesome. owe me money. <laughs> the, the, the thing is, man, I, I still don't think. Uh, the players realize because I definitely didn't realize how much power they still do hold. Even you know, like you could change; they could change the game. They could, they could probably change the game in a way that you're talking about right now. Do you remember when Mizzou, when that Mizzou team was like, "We ain't playing Saturday." Yep, <laughs> they fired Buddy immediately. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they were looking at missing. It buddy. had to be done. What? One weekend at that stadium, which ain't that big, they wanted the revenue for that weekend. One weekend at that little bitty stadium, and that school was like, "Oh no, um, hey, hey, it, was a, 
it was a big revenue game because I think they was playing BYU at Arrowhead. Like this is one of the times that they was gonna cash in, and the boys said they wouldn't go play. I thought it was at home. Oh, okay. I th- I think no, I think it was like it was home, but they took it to Arrowhead. You know what I'm saying? Because mm-hmm. the thing about playing against BYU is, however many Mormons is in your little municipality, they coming. They're right, so fun. so you so you take that out there, but they right they find that dude the next day. The, they were the just next like, day, okay. like, mm. like that's that's the power they hold. But you're right about about paying the players because I think the in the NCAA is the NCAA football is turning into another pro league anyway. When you think about it, it's a pro. It's a different pro league. It's a pro league with an age limit. That's what it is. If you treat yeah. it like that, I think it. It can it can turn into something cool. I think, you well, know, the, it's just a pro league with an age limit. The I new agree. proposal to, you know, basically bring all this in house and split Division One into schools that can afford to, I think, pay all their roster what thirty grand a year is it? Is that like the the floor, or something? Um, but they just put this this proposal out from the inside of the NCAA last week, which mm-hmm. or two weeks ago, which is the most revolutionary thing I've seen the NCAA do in my lifetime. Like. I think it's coming. And I think if you talk to coaches quietly, like they don't want to get up and use their platform to lobby for this stuff for lots of different reasons, but like they would much prefer all of this to come in house and not having to wonder like, what is this collective doing? You know, is, are they going to try and recruit the same guy I'm recruiting? Like what, you know, there's a lot of just red tape and, tangled webs to navigate for these guys right now on top of everything else they have to do with their jobs. And like, I think that uh, anything that would make this simpler and more direct is good. And it needs to happen. I agree. All right. Well, Bamani Jones, where can the people see you, man? I mean, everybody loves to hear your voice. You get that iconic voice and you know a lot about sports, a lot about everything, quite honestly, but where can people continue to see your uh, see your face, see your stuff? Well, the right time with Bomani Jones is still cracking. We took it over to Wave Sports and Entertainment. It's a bit more of a YouTube operation, but we're still doing the podcast. But there is a channel for the right time with Bomani Jones. Put us in YouTube We're all three times a week. We go live Monday, Wednesday. Well, we broadcast on YouTube Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at noon Eastern. Um, same regular guests that we've had. I gotta, I gotta, I, I'm, I'm working on broadening this out. I gotta get more of the homies all to the show, but no, we're there and we're going, man. Go keep this rolling. All right, we appreciate you coming on. We, you're welcome anytime. Thank Just you for on it, show, man. Just let us know. We appreciate you. No, I look, I told George, I was like, man, I, I had looked up one day and been like, damn, I've been trying to get on this. I got out the HBO world, I got a chance, and then George messed up and lost. But I was glad that y'all didn't let that stop y'all. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I was afraid opportunities had been lost. All right, brother, we appreciate you as always. All right, man, you guys be good. All right, All right, man. All right man, I appreciate y'all. All right, All right sir. Really. thanks for coming on, man. Yep. Hey, Bomani Jones, brothers, how was that? It's good. good. Bomani always has interesting takes on a myriad of things. You know, he's very, very well thought, thought out person. You know, he ain't, you know, he ain't spewing a whole bunch of ridiculousness. You know, <laughs> he has, he has his, he has his, uh, he speaks so well about what he speaks about. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you exactly. know, he, exactly. he can get he can get his point across better than most people. Exactly. You know? So so it's good to have him on. He made some made some uh some some good points. He made some good yeah. points about a few things. Well, we got to get back to the main thing. Uh, the main thing. Well, we we didn't yeah. get we didn't give Graham the the, the floor. Oh no. Yeah, what, what is it, Graham? What you got? What you got for well, us, I gotta man? follow that. Come on now. Yeah, what man. You oh, got for that. Graham always got well, and, and let, let me set the table. Let me set the table. Because before you came on, we were talking about the portal. That's what I uh, a little bit, but mainly we were talking about the big news that hit Dog Nation. Um with the thought of Dylan Riola um mm-hmm. possibly decommitting to Nebraska. Um, what are your thoughts on that? Give us some intel. Give us what you know. Give the people what you know. Because we got to calm down, Dog Nation, with all this. Not, they think the sky's falling, baby. <laughs> well, right. it's 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 interesting. You kind of, you know, ask about Riola and the portal and the same question. Because they are, 
at their core, they're the same issue, right? Yeah. Like, and and it's the issue we were just talking about with Bomani. It is, I'm special. I should be on the field, you know? Like, I, and, and that's the hardest thing. And George, I mean, you know, it, it's different, I think, from when you came up, like this modern recruiting era with star rankings and thousands of fans like sucking up to these kids, these 15, 16, 17, 18 year old kids on Twitter. Like sometimes it's a little uncomfortable to watch, honestly, um, yeah. because it's just look, man, like I, I think all of us as human beings, like we have to uh, so sometimes to get to where we want to go in life or to be happy where we are in life. Like, we have to defeat the ego a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. Like we have to do some work on that and that thing mm -hmm. will pop up and you got to knock it back down sometimes. And, uh, to be, the book about that. Just... yeah, man, and to be in those formative years and have everyone telling you how great you are and how you're going to change their program when, you know, when you might, but in reality, you are all, you are one of 25 in that class or you are one of, you know, however many that are going to come in in the transfer portal, like the NFL draft is an event for outliers. It is. It's, it's, it's the, mm -hmm. it's the 1% of the 1%, you know, I mean, there's only what 256 slots, I think in the draft, like that's not that many guys. And I just, you know, not everybody's going to get drafted. And, you know, there are guys who they get somewhere and it's, it's not a fit or, or mom's, you know, not doing well. Like there's, there's good reasons to transfer, but I mean, you brought it up earlier, George, like Quay Walker, Channing Tindall, these guys who were five-star recruits who were number one, like inside linebacker in their class kind of thing and waited three years to get on the field. Like, and, and then when they got there, they balled out and they went to the league and, and, you know, in a lot of ways there's less mileage on their bodies and, and they might have a better chance of making it to their second contract. But like with this Riola thing, I, I've gotten like I got to know him a little bit. I went out to Elite Eleven and was around him. Like I want to be clear, I think he is a a good kid. I think he's a well intentioned kid. Um, mm -hmm. and, you know, and, and I I didn't mm -hmm. experience him as you know a bad kid or anything like that. Um, but at the same time, like four high schools in four years, uh, this will you know if he leaves Georgia, it'll be his third commitment within I think a couple you know years. Uh, at some point in life, like there is power in staying through things that are uncomfortable or fighting th through what you want. And like when I was a kid, you know, I, uh, I wanted to play football really, really bad. My dad, uh, son of a, a high school football coach, uh, co coached in, in Georgia and Cartersville and all over like for many years. And so he had one rule when I wanted to sign up for football and that was, you, you don't, quit like if you if you're gonna sign up then like you, you know you're gonna play the whole season and I was you know at that time in life I think I was like 10 years old and you know some of the kids were more grown up than I was and I you know like was was a smaller guy and like I went out there the first couple of weeks and I got the shit beat out of me you know what I mean like I was not a big hit. I was taking hits and I was not comfortable or having a good time right? <laughs> but I knew I knew that like I couldn't I couldn't quit and that like you know that that was never going to be an idea or a thought and I and I stayed and like I got bigger and I got faster and I ended up starting some games at the end of the season right and like it was it was a good thing for like my self-confidence as a human being to you know have that experience of like being a little bit, you know, not a little wobbly on your feet and finding a way to steady yourself and then finding a way to be successful. And, uh, you know, that that's, I was an Eagle scout. I think a lot of that was because of that season, because like it was a long-term commitment and, you know, I got a driver's license and like, I wanted to, you know, chase girls and go, go do things. But like I had said, I was going to finish that. And so I finished it. And now, you know, in life that, people, you know, it's on my resume, even as a, a 34 year old man. And people ask about that and they're like, Oh, like, you know, you must finish things. And so I think it's good to finish things. I, I, uh, I'm with George. Like, I'm glad that people can leave <clears throat> and go if they need to go or, you know, go take care of family and all of that. But 
in most cases, like they they really shouldn't be leaving. You know, there's there's still a lot to learn. And um, you know, Marvin Jones Jr., like Julian Humphrey, like Julian Humphrey is a really talented player. I had people close to Georgia's program in, in fall camp. Like he is probably our most talented cover corner. And that is on a roster with Kamari Lassiter, you know, um, like at the end of the day, he, he wasn't getting on the field all the time because he didn't do the greatest job always of getting off blocks. And he didn't come up and run support the way that, that Kirby smart defenses demand their boundary corners do. If he learns how to do that, he will be all the more successful in the NFL. He will be all the more successful at UGA. He will be. He can play like Witherspoon player. at Seattle. I mean, he's yeah. got that type of body frame. Yeah, you know? he's. I mean, he's like built like a safety. You know, he's yes. built like yes. Starks, and he can come up and thump people. Like he can be a really special player. And at the end of the day. I think what's probably going to end up happening if he does decide to hit the portal is like, he's going to get a nice check to go back to his home state of Texas. And he's going to have pretty much a guaranteed starting job. And, you know, it, he's going to make some plays and make some interceptions and all of that. But like, if I'm Georgia and I come to Austin, which I do on October 19th, run I'm going to run the ball right at his ass. And I'm going to find out if he's learned how to, you know, get off blocks and be physical and run support. And, you know, point being like, you might not want to do it at Georgia, but you better figure out how to do these things at some point. Cause if you don't, you're not going to get where you want to go in life. Mm -hmm. Facts. Facts. Well, there's a lot, we got a lot of guys in the portal and, you know, and I brought up the statement of, you know, dog fans who need to calm down because I mean, there's a lot, there's a lot of guys in the portal, but they're not guys that are going to make or break the entire operation. They're not tearing down the culture. They're not, you know, reestablishing anything for Georgia. They're guys that either we're not going to see a lot of time or they're going to be depth guys. Or like you just mentioned with someone like Humphrey, who, who may portal out, we haven't, uh, haven't declared that yet, but at the same time, he still needs to grow, but there's other guys on that roster that are, that are willing and dedicated to being that dude willing to, and, and dedicated to be a part of the Georgia culture. Nothing has changed. Like George said before you even got on, we're still at the top of the mountain. We're just yeah. allowing somebody to, you know, kind of see the see the mountainside and you know from you know from up there, and then all of a sudden we're going to take over again because Kirby's got a good thing going. He's got a excellent culture development. Uh, you know, Bomani was talking about the offense. The offense is still rolling. And guess what? Last time I heard, we haven't. He hasn't put out any you know big time edits or anything like that. But Beck should be back, and as long as that guy's under center. I'm you fine. Got a shot to win the title. You got a shot to win a title. Yeah, that definitely. dude is going to be a first round pick next year. And mm -hmm. if it wasn't for the plethora of quarterbacks coming out this year, he'd be a first round pick this year. That this this class is loaded in the it's NFL. Deep, and deep somebody's class. not going to have a job. I'm going to tell you that. All these guys that are coming out, you're not you're not getting on an NFL roster because there's so many guys coming out. You're not starting day one on an NFL roster. But next year, hey, the kid's going to be lights out and he could be first round pick easily. I mean, the other thing I would yeah. remind – I'm sorry, go ahead, George. Um, I was just <clears> – <throat> I think with – the thing with Georgia, and it's been said over over and over uh, since the Kirby Smart era started, is that, you know, and the, and the players have, you know, reiterated this, that it's not for everybody. It's not. You have to be built a certain way. And I think I think uh, you know Mr. Milton said it the other day, you know, on um, Twitter. I think he was like, "Everybody's not not built to be a dog. Like you, there's a certain there's there's certain expectations. There's a certain level of work that's going to be put in, and um, and you're going to do it their way because it works. You know what I mean? There's no there's no leeway, and there can't and there can't be any." Like the the culture, the culture and the way of doing things can't waver, um, because because then you start, you know, funny stuff start infiltrating your culture. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. you have to stand, you have to stand on what you stand on, and and keep it rolling and get the guys in that that are willing to adhere to it. 
you know what I mean? And so right. that's how that's how they're gonna keep it rolling. That's that's how I would assume, you know, Kirby keeps it rolling, you know. And if you don't want to be there, you know, I think he'll be he'll be more than fine with letting you go do what you want to do. You know what I mean? And they'll get and giving and you a great recommendation. Plenty, <laughs> great recommendation, and there's plenty of people that plenty of kids that want to be in your spot. You know what I mean? So it'd be it'd be fine. And 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 if it's a guy that's you know that wants your spot, that's maybe not have not as physically talented, or whatever. Understand that development happens at a at a at a at a at a high clip at that school. You know what I mean? So they they'll get they'll get the players in there that fit what they want to do. Thanks. Well, Graham, you got any other intel, any other news before we get up out of here today? Uh, I mean, the, the last thing I was going to say is just, you know, uh, the door swings both ways. And I would encourage Georgia fans to remember that. Like, there are some people that are on the way out, but there's about to be some people on the way in that you're going to be <laughs> rather excited about. And, like, man, uh, trust, you know, I tweeted this, I think, whatever day it was, I guess Monday now, when all this Riola stuff started coming out with the crystal ball and all that. And I was just like, if I was a Georgia fan, I would probably trust the staff that just won 29 games in a row. Like, I think they'll <laughs> right. figure it out, you know. Um, yes, they'll figure it out. So I think it's going to be all right. And uh, I'm excited to see, like, you know, I, I don't think Georgia wanted Marvin Jones Jr. to get in the portal and leave. He is a supremely talented football player. But now that he is gone – uh, you know, this is the best, I think, problem-solving staff in college football. Um, they, mm -hmm. they solved a problem with JT and Stetson midseason with, with that whole situation. Like, there's many instances of them not having the guy they thought that was going to be there and and figuring it out on the fly midseason. I promise you they'll figure it out with, with this much time between, you know, now and the 2024 season starting. So it'll it'll be fine. Facts. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, we're gonna have another banger next week. We got to start talking about the uh the big orange bowl game. Um, we got FSU coming in and we gotta we gotta dig into that because there's gonna be there's a lot of people pissed off. I mean, that Georgia fans are pissed off, F FSU fans are pissed off, so we gotta bring somebody in to talk about all this pissed off attitude that's going on around this game. So uh, but I can't wait to talk about it. Can't guys I don't know, I don't know who's playing, who's not playing. But man, it's just um, it's, especially if this was back in the day, this was this, with how everything shook out. If it, if there is it, the potential was there for a slobber knocker. It's two teams that's very that are mad about what happened, you know, a couple of weeks ago. And um, there's there's potential there for a real, you know, throwdown. You know, you know, things are different. In today's game, with people sitting out, people transferring all that, but um, I hope it's a, I hope it's a really, I hope it's a really good, a really good game. And we shouldn't get late be. because it's before it's before New Year's too, so we shouldn't get guys hungover. <laughs> should, should get a, you know, you might get some people to travel down there that can also get back, you know, back to their respective places before New Year's. So it should be a pretty good game. I can't wait for it, quite honestly. Yes, sir. All right, fellas, with that being said, we'll see you at one of Sanford. Go All dogs. Right. See you. Thank you for listening to the 100 Sanford Podcast. Tune in weekly to hear fresh content from the 100 Sanford Podcast every Thursday but also with some pop-up shows every now and then as news breaks. You can also follow the content on our website, www.100sanfordpodcast.com and email us at dogs at 100sanfordpodcast.com. Lastly, reach out to us on social media streams. For Twitter, it's at 100 Sanford, but on IG, TikTok, Facebook, and other accounts, it's 100 Sanford Podcast. All right, folks, that's it. And as usual, see you at 100 Sanford.